So it's my great pleasure to welcome uh, Dr. Fauzi Nashashibi from uh, uh, INRIA. He is currently the senior researcher and program manager at the Imara team at INRIA, and he's been a senior researcher in uh, Mainz Paris Tech since uh, 1994. Uh, he got his PhD in 92 in robotics, and since then he has worked in a lot of areas, including intelligent transportation, perception, robotics, and so on. And uh, today he's going to talk about uh, autonomous uh, city driving. Uh, so welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Srinivas. So thank you very much. So I'm very happy to be here with you today. Uh, of course, you can uh, interrupt me whenever you, you would like and ask a few questions if you want. So I'm going to present first my, my lab, our lab's uh, act activities, and then focus on some issues around uh, automated driving. So this is a, a view of, uh, of our lab on some of the vehicles we have, actually. So very quickly, I belong to INRIA. INRIA is the French National Institute uh, in Informatics and Automation. We are located at uh, eight sites, eight different sites in France. This is the France map. And we are actually here, near Versailles. Uh, maybe you are familiar with the Chateau de Versailles, where some kings had very bad experience. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so we are there. Um, we are about uh, 2,500 people. Uh, half of them are in the staff. And the other 50% are, uh, let's say, non-permanent people, PhD, doc, uh, postdocs, and, and so on. Um, um, so, and 50% of our staff are researchers. Actually, we should know that we have 180 teams, which is about an average of 10 to 12 people per, per team. But those people focus on a very specific uh, scientific uh, topic. And the lifetime of each team is 12 years. So each, if every 12 years, we have to re-change re, re it or uh, dismantle the team and to do it again. So it makes it a kind of interesting turnover. And the activities are all, all about computer science, uh, image processing, signal processing, uh, cognitive and digital sciences, and things like that. So Imara is one of those 180 teams. But we are somehow an untypical team in India because we are about 32 to 40 people. This is because we have a, in, uh, not only a research lab, but because we ha also have a very, uh, let's say, experimental platform. Um, we are also a transverse team in that we work with other teams at INRIA in order to integrate the uh, know-how and technology and deploy them on, on our uh, demonstrators. Uh, and we have also a very active research activity. Uh, we are today in, uh, involved in 20, more than 20 living contracts, living projects, which is huge compared to our uh, staff uh, number. So, and we are mainly involved in European projects. And this is uh, one of the subjects of, of my talk today. Another thing is that we are a member of a joint research unit called uh, LARA, LARA, La Route Automatisée, automated, the automated road. And this involves Mainz Paris Tech, which is a very well-known university, French university, located in Paris and IFSTAR, which is the fusion of INRETS and LCPC, two different, uh, let's say, huge national institutes working on transportations. So all those make about 100 researchers, let's say. Our main research topics are around intelligent transportation systems in order to improve road uh, transport in terms of Mobility, mobility and safety. It's based on information and communication sciences and technology. And it ranges from driver information to full automa automated uh, driving through uh, the uh, development and design of advanced driver assistance systems, known as ADAS. 
In our lab, we have three main research topics, which are uh, traffic simulation and modeling, so the macroscopic view of the traffic, uh, the robotics part, which is all related to perception, navigation, control, and uh, task planning, and so on, and a spe special work also on uh, telecommunications, V2V, vehicle-to-vehicle, -vehicle and vehicle-to-infrastructure communications. Now, this is the kind of <coughs> vehicles we have, unmanned vehicles, mainly used for pro function prototyping. I will talk about them later on, of course. And we also have uh, traditional vehicles. Some of them we are sharing with our partners in LARA, GRU, GRU. And some are uh, electric vehicles like those, which are used in different projects in which we work. We also have some robots and specially dedicated uh, man-machine interfaces like here, the Paravan system, the only certified system for disabled people. So again, our work on driver assistance systems is all about multi-sensor data fusion, uh, task planning, trajectory planning, low-level, high-level control, man-machine interfaces, and so on. I will give you some examples about that. Uh, interesting point is in the communication technologies for mobile vehicles. We are mainly interested in the deployment of IPv6 protocol, and we have uh, an, an in geo networking, and we are also we have a good effort in the star standardization uh, process. We are involved in the ISO and ETSI uh, meetings in order to. Uh, work uh, on, on this uh, with those norms and, and standards. We have a uh, very interesting uh, co cooperations, of course, inside INRIA, but also in, in France with the private sector like uh, Valio Group and uh, Peugeot, Citroën, but also all over the world, let's say, <laughs> in Europe, in Asia, and in North America, Berkeley, Stanford, uh, Jiaotong University, Keio, and nice in Japan, ja uh, uh, Yangnam uh, National uh, uh, National um, University of Seoul, and, and, and different uh, institutes actually. And what I mean by cooperations is, of course, uh, exchange of researchers, vid visiting researchers or professors. Uh, common contracts, uh, real collaborations. So I hope that we, I can add one more uh, tag here for CMU very soon. So let's show you just, just very brief uh, view of what we are doing. In perception, we are mainly interested in obstacle detection using vision, for instance, like vehicle detection here for uh, autonomous cruise control or anti-collision systems. Uh, we also work, though, so this is the kind of uh, things we develop. We developed in the context of the French Arcos project, which was a huge project involving more than 30 partners. So this, this is a laser vision-based detection system for uh, ACC, advanced ACC, with a risk assessment uh, function. Cut in, cut out, uh, cut off, and things like that. We also work on the fusion of vision and, uh, and radar here to show the interest of the fusion. Radar only, radar plus vision. We also have a good, we had a good activity in pedestrian detection, uh, mainly using uh, low-level features or using learning-based techniques uh, with uh, typical cameras or with infrared cameras like here. Okay, this is based actually on adaptive boosting techniques. And this is what it gives in a crowded environment. I'll go f a bit fast, but if you have any question, of course, you can ask me. You may get to this, but um, you show uh, vehicle detection on the vehicles ahead. Yes. You've shown uh, pedestrians. What about road hazards? 
when we're on the highway quite often you have uh, like a tire tread from a truck that's in the middle of the road yeah. do you also have systems to detect to detect yeah of course it's uh, mainly the same sensors the same uh, tools are you also used uh, for any obstacle detection uh, so here, for instance, is the fusion of uh, laser and uh, laser and vision for pedestrian detection. But actually, everyone knows that we can have very uh, much of uh, false detections. This is why we we developed also a, the occupancy grids-based techniques in order to take into account the velocity and other contextual information like here and we can prove that we can solve the problem of occlusions and uh, crossings so this is very very interesting uh, approach Sir, yeah yeah of uh, we we actually we have tried many many sensors like in laser sensors for instance hokuyo's uh, ebo uh, lux sensors ld automotive sensor uh, the sick sensors um, we also have been using a Dr. Regal's uh, sensors, um, so uh, and in cameras, of course, many kinds of cameras, and different types of radars like Auto Cruise, TRW, uh, Raytheon ca uh, rad radars. So actually, uh, I don't don't give here some. I can give you some details for different. Uh, okay. So we also work on the driver monitoring through the detection of the faces. This cute lady, I know that Raul is very happy with that. And the application of this was through our cooperation with Mack Truck and Renault uh, in the driver monitoring. This is uh, by using infrared front camera in order to detect the drowsiness of the, uh, of the driver. Of course, traditional work on lane detection in order to make lane keeping detection systems and uh, perform re relative positioning on the road. And we also are interested in environment, uh, other environment information like vertical signal, uh, signalization, like here, the detection of uh, traffic lights, real time detection of traffic lights using single uh, single views, single cameras. So the aim here is the, to detect the uh, traffic lights and try to estimate also their position in order to fluidify the traffic and in order to make, to help the driver to keep alert and to respect the, the regulations, of course. Do you use background knowledge about the existing traffic lights or are you actually detecting it from the system? No, we, we, we detect the spotlights and then we have a template matching uh, algorithm. So while you're doing mm -hmm. that, are you using any private information like map or location? No, only a kind of um, tra the, the typical size of the, uh, uh, of the traffic light, that's it. This is the only assumption we have. I know that here in the USA you have different kinds of traffic lights, horizontal ones, the vertical ones, different sizes. So it won't, it won't work here unless we adapt our templates. We have to, to add more templates. But in, in France, most of the traffic lights look like that. They can be big or sm uh, small, but they always look like this kind, and only with three spots. We never have four or five different spots. We also have, uh, we work also on the detection on traffic signs, or speed limitation traffic signs mainly to perform a, a speed limitation uh, monitoring system like here for instance so this is very typical maybe uh, european uh, signs you you may not be familiar with and we also uh, applied this, those techniques on the on very on portable cameras like the one you have on your hands and this was actually in, on, in the Senegal in Africa so see it's very <laughs> 
since the camera information is not that robust because you can have occlusions, uh, trucks passing by, and then, uh, okay, so we have uh, fused the inf this information with the, oh, it's repairing the video. <coughs> I hope it will work. So we are fusing this vis uh, vision-based information with the GIS systems, thanks to a belief, um, belief masses, belief theory. And uh, we also noticed that uh, very in interesting information is the uh, lines, the uh, lines information, lane markings. And this is why we have developed also the first lane marking systems. We also, since now I show something about perception, we also work on planning, motion planning, like here, this robot that has to reach this goal with a very highly dynamic uh, environment, trying to avoid the obstacle in real time. But when you try to apply this to a vehicle, of course it will not work, because when you are at an in intersection, you cannot uh, have a holonomic movement. You have to respect some regulations, the way you make the overtakings or the, the, the way you, you make the, you, the turns. So we had to develop different techniques and different control rules in order to make very simple uh, overtakings, for example. Here we consider the overtaking as a polynomial and develop a Lapunov-based control to do that. We also work on platoonings, single track platoonings. I will explain to you later why. And we also work on uh, optimal automated, parallel automated parking. Uh, of course, on simulation. And actually, this is the work of my colleague, uh, Clément, who is uh, joining us today. We do it on our own simulator, but also with our uh, sci ci cyber cars, like here. Uh, before it works, See what happens. It could happen. Okay. Thank you, Clément. <laughs> Actually, it was not related to this. It was only uh, a, a, a PhD student that was not uh, actually uh, aware of the inertial uh, of the of the cycap. So uh, it just got into uh, the, the 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 garage door. And, <laughs> and what we you can see here is a. Uh, optimal uh, planning f to perform the parking. Is that real time? Uh, this is, uh, yeah, I, I guess so. This is a uh, real time, yeah. And this is simulation. This is our simulator again, only to show you different configurations. You can see that this is when actually, this is the way we park in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> I can even tell you that usually we, we have to kiss the two. We, we, the, the term is to kiss the other vehicles. <laughs> of course, in France, you have always such expressions. But this is an optimal way to get there. We also work on guidance, of course, because we are interested mostly in uh, navigation. So what you can see here is the top view, the bird view of uh, Indria, Oconcou, our site. We are here, I guess. And this is the result of the uh, digitization of the environment uh, using uh, um, a single laser sensor, but a multi-layer laser sensor. This was an Alaska uh, LiDAR. And what you can see here is the zoom of this area in order to show you what happens when you get back and the loop closure uh, effect. So we have a very, very accurate positioning. We, we, we can reach centimetric accuracy thanks to our SLAM algorithm. And this is already integrated on our AGV. This is how it works, actually. So this is our vehicle, our cyber car. It is equipped with uh, Alaska or Lux. We, we tried it with several sensors. So it performs the mapping. And while you are moving, you pr match with the map you have just built, relocate yourself and make incremental modeling. And we also can detect dynamic objects in the scene and evaluate or estimate their dynamic, uh, their uh, kinematics. 
like here, and somehow a classification, pedestrian, its position, and speed. And this is very in interesting. So thanks to this technique, we, we were able to implement it on our uh, autonomous guided vehicles I am showing here. So this demonstration was done in uh, Norway in the, con in the context of a European project called City Mobile. So the idea is to bring this kind of uh, automated uh, uh, vehicles in the heart of the cities in order to bring new, mo new transportation modes. So this is uh, the HMI that is inside the, this AGV. So you get into, you just select your destination, and the vehicle uses its perception-based system, the SLAM, in order to navigate and reach the destination. You can, of course, call the uh, AGV with your iPhone, so it detects your position, your global position, and comes to you. And you can also, we will see it later, you can also use the accelerators, actually, the gyros that are inside your iPhone in order to drive it. I don't, don't advise you, but uh, we can do it. And later on, I, I can may also show you that we can use the iPhone, the slipping mode, the scrolling mode, in order to drive, not only using the accelerators, but only the touch uh, the touch screen effect. So he was not that confident, I guess. So this is a view from inside. And it's, of course, since it's based on lasers, it is uh, not that sensitive to rain. So this is very interesting. So let's, uh, I gave you just a few examples of Topics. Of course, I could show you things about com communications and uh, other interesting things. If you have any questions, of course, we can talk on later on. I will talk to you about the, uh, what, our, uh, what are our real objectives in doing this, is to improve the mobility in, in, in the cities. So since the beginning, since the 90s, uh, we were um, focusing on the new ways of uh, transportation. Because as you know, in, the, in old Europe, uh, we have very uh, crowded um, cities. The roads and cities are not well planned for the, the development of the transportation. So we need something to, to new for the last kilometers, last mile. And this is why we were thinking about new mobility um, modes um, that are monitored, managed by the operators. So the idea is to design maybe new public urban vehicles, like those ones, but this is only our view, and bring them into the cities and make th have, uh, have them, uh, uh, let them have um, intelligent, intelligent functions like uh, capacities of performing automated parking, platoonings, and things like that, communicate them, uh, make uh, communications with them, and uh, in, in complement to other transportation modes, like public transportation, buses, and so on. And actually, since the 70s, there, were, there have been some attempts, like here in Amsterdam, and there was a huge uh, um, French uh, project called Praxitel, in the, in the early 90s, where we already had electric vehicles, 50 electric vehicles, uh, in a car sharing uh, mode, with uh, induction charging systems, <coughs> and with uh, platooning and automatic, automatic, uh, automatic parking capabilities, and with uh, uh, wireless payment. So by that time, it was really something new. And as you can see, we, we have developed some platooning uh, functions, capabilities at high speed, showing that we were able also to reduce the distances between the vehicles. I didn't choose the music, so sorry if... Uh, so as you can see, it's very high speed um, system, and you can stop almost immediately. And this was only based on communication not on sensors.
And actually, the first car sharing system that was really deployed in a city was in La Rochelle in 1998, like uh, here, the Lisa Lake system. And there was a spin-off of India called Vulog uh, that was created and has deployed already three systems in three different French cities, La Rochelle, Nice, and Droy Malmaison. Maybe you know Nice, but not the others. <laughs> I will talk about La Rochelle later on. And the, what is interesting to say is that this uh, strategy, this cyber car uh, development strategy, was also encouraged by the European institutions. Uh, since the 90s, actually, there were some um, attempts to develop those kinds of vehicles, like the Serpentine system or the Ultra uh, shuttles. And we, were, we are playing a key role, INRIA is playing a key role in the deployment of such system and the development of the, and demonstrating those systems, especially through European projects like Cybercars 2, CityMobile, uh, CityNetMobile, Crystal. This is uh, the Crystal system. Um, and we think that in 2012, there will be a very huge uh, project called City. Uh, well, city, uh, cyber cities or City Mobile 2, which aim is to develop true services that will be tested in different cities, different European cities during one year, six months to one year. So, and actually, there are already some uh, transportation systems based on cyber cars that are already uh, running here in Rouen, in the French city called Rouen, it's a bus system, autonomous bus systems. The um, PRT developed at Heathrow he Airport. And here, uh, this is the uh, Mazdar cyber car. Mazdar is uh, in the United Arab Emirates. So those systems uh, run, actually. Uh, and one important project, uh, European project, was City Mobile. The aim of CityMobile was to develop three major demonstrations at Heathrow, Rome, and Valencia, and the de uh, to develop several showcases. So in uh, Castellón, in Spain, uh, the system that was developed was a uh, semi-autonomous bus system that is running using a uh, camera. There, there is a driver in the bus in order to monitor the, the functioning. And it has a specific lane. Okay. There is also the ultra system, um, this kind of PRTs that are dedicated to, uh, to, to, to perform transportation from the airport to the, uh, to the station. Oh, <clears throat> I have a problem with the, sorry. Uh, in Rome, there were the, the system that was developed at this kind of moving bus stop. It's not a bus stop, of course. It's supposed to be a shuttle, but it's really ugly. <laughs> um, although they were in Italy, um, but it's a French company, I have to admit. This is Robosoft that is uh, building and designing this kind of shuttle, um, and uh, it's uh, Objective is to uh, perform several miles uh, itineraries between uh, uh, campus and uh, different place in Rome. And here I reach the La Rochelle demonstration in w that we were responsible of. La Rochelle is uh, this is the a, a part of Europe. This is France here, Paris, and. 400 kilometers away from Paris, you have uh, La Rochelle City. And in La Rochelle, La Rochelle is a very high-tech uh, city, actually. They've been testing every new technology, especially in trans transportation and the deployment of electric-based systems. The first electric bus, the first car sharing system, the first uh, electric boat. Uh, the, fir the first uh, bicycle sharing system early in the <coughs> 70s. And the idea was here to design uh, a system to show uh, an autonomous uh, vehicle-based system that goes from the university campus here to the electric board harbor. It's only 
maybe um, 1.5 miles path, and we had to develop the uh, uh, a system that goes through this area. And this area, for the first time, is a true mixed area where you have pedestrians, vehicles, and our cyber cars. And this is very new. This is what it looks like. And this is the kind of the stations we have built in order to, to call what we call uh, the horizontal elevator. Because what we wanted to do, to do is a kind of uh, on-demand system where you just come and touch the screen, select your destination, and the nearest uh, sidecab would come to you. And again, you can uh, change or uh, uh, confirm your destination and you go uh, wherever you want. And this is based, based on wireless technology, of course, wireless communications. And as you can see, there is a mixed road with intersections, like here. The stop, those stops <laughs> were uh, added, actually, because uh, for safety reasons, you can easily uh, imagine. This is another view of the system. And those are the, uh, the two cyber cars that were uh, used in this demonstration. So, of course, the technical challenges of such a system is the navigation, how to position yourself. You could not use G GPS because of many shortages we had because of the canyoning effect. So we had to navigate using only our sensors. And actually, we only used the laser sensor and the SLAM technique I showed to you uh, at the beginning of my speech. Uh, the communication, of course, was in, in, in important issues. Uh, and obstacle avoidance. You cannot imagine the number of uh, kids that were coming in front of the system, trying to play with, uh, stop it, and then, because since uh, at the beginning we were trying to, uh, to perform overtaking, but they knew about that, so they were following the, the vehicle and when tried to overtake, they just put themselves again in front of it and it was really a game. So we stopped that and we said, okay, we should have a uh, vehicle monitoring system that will see what happens. Um, another problem is the synchronization of, the, of both vehicles because uh, all the stops, all the stops are from one side, as you can see here. So the vehicles have to share the space and we can never know when there is a conflict. So this is a very tricky situation um, we had to deal with. And of course, we had to perform a precise docking without instrumenting the uh, infrastructure. So we didn't have the possibility of putting magnets or something like that. So we've been using vision-based techniques for the docking. Uh, Non-technical non problems we had is, of course, the certification, the authorizations. Since our vehicle goes uh, less than uh, 30 kilometers per hour, they are not considered as vehicles anymore. So you don't have any certification, any authorization. So the mayor of the city, of La Rochelle city, said, mm, OK, I want to deploy that. I take the responsibility of uh, allowing you to, to do this demonstration. But this was very tricky. On the other hand, it is not allowed. The rules, the French laws do not allow a vehicle to drive autonomously. No driver? Oh, because, of course, of safety issues and things like that. So we had to put someone inside. So the person that was inside didn't have, of course, any driving wheel or pedals. So he was just explaining the system to people and make some statistics. So this is what we have done. Insurances, strangely, because in France everything goes difficult when you try uh, to make administrative issues. Everything is difficult. But strangely, insurance didn't have any problem with insuring our system. Oh, since you have the price, you know how it goes. OK, one million, one million, I will insure you. Luckily, because we had a trouble. We had an accident. I will explain that to you later on. <laughs> uh, the pedestrian behavior, I told you about that. 
It's e about the kids. It's even worse in Italy. We've been doing some demonstrations in, in Formello in Italy, and it was really worse. People were playing around using it as a, yeah, you know, uh, how do you call it? Carts, cart cars, or what? Well, vehicles behavior and degradations. Actually, we didn't have any degradation. Nobody tried to harm. So the only accident we had, actually, was a vehicle that was making a um, reverse maneuver and didn't see the vehicle. So our uh, vehicle was beeping, beep, 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 but of course uh, couldn't escape. So the vehicle was even faster. And we had, actually we had a slight accident. Only the laser sensor was uh, damaged. Well, still several thousand of dollars, but okay. So we made some statistics, actually. What is interesting in this is to get some experience with, with the system. So here, we asked almost 50 person, man, woman, what do they think uh, about the system? And we tried to know who was really uh, experiencing the system during the three months of demonstrations. Actually, they were not demonstrations. They were real service during th three months. Most of the people were over 60. Many of them were using it several times because they didn't want to walk and to do the, uh, OK? So they were using it. And many young people, because of the curiosity, I, I guess, they wanted to know how it works and so on. We also asked people if they felt secure and the answer for about 73% of the people said, yes, I feel secure in that. And about, they, uh, are they afraid of an accident? Most of them were not afraid of accident, but 65 people. So they feel secure, yes, but yeah. This was before or after? <laughs> <laughs> after, after experiencing it. Uh, Did you do before and after survey? Actually, no. This is a very uh, this is very interesting. A very interesting question because uh, maybe things would be uh, different, of course. But this is uh, rather good for us to to, to think that they, they feel secure. Uh, and when they, we ask them if they think that this is uh, adapted to the city. It's interesting to say, are you uh, willing to have such a system in your city? 24% said yes. And 93% of people said, yeah, okay, they, it could even be adapted to other uh, types, other cities, other uh, types of environments. So this is um, a movie. On croyait qu'il serait volant, Oops. mais le véhicule du futur pourrait finalement être it's, uh, it's in French. Oh. Um. Ce drôle de prototype, le Cebus, a fait son apparition à La Rochelle. Parcours de 900 mètres et de 5 stations. This is why it, it was. No mute. So as you can see, it's a like full autonomous uh, vehicle. She says that she feels secure in the, in the vehicle, and that it's a nice vehicle. Um, uh, oh, one other issue we had is with the journalists. This is the mayor of the city. The, the problem is that at the, uh, how do you say, in inauguration? Is it the good word? Yeah. We had many, many journalists around. And so the lasers couldn't know where they were because we were, based, uh, we were basing our positioning system on lasers. So everybody was around, and the mayor inside the vehicle, myself, and other uh, politics. So, and the, the vehicle couldn't move. And say, oh, your system is not working. Say, come on, if you are making navigation using a camera and put your hands on front to do the same. So please let them go. So the idea now with the new system we have, we will be putting the laser sensors on the top of the vehicle and keep on the um, other Alaska sensors on the front for the obstacle detection. We still need to detect the bad journalists we have. So 
We also have a vision, of course, vision system for the monitoring of the operation. So as you can see, we are working on new generation of urban vehicles uh, to, to, to bring them in the city and to, uh, um, and this is the new kind of uh, vehicles we, we are designing, we developed together with a French company called uh, Indat. This, was, uh, this vehicle was shown in the uh, Paris Motor Show uh, last year. And you can have, uh, it's a 700 kilograms, uh, the weight of the system. You, have, you can see here the EBOLAX sensors. Uh, we are putting them with, uh, with this configuration in order to have 360 degrees coverage. We also have different cameras and ultrasound sensors around, and two screens, uh, a multimedia screen, and the monitoring screen. So this kind of vehicles is supposed now to, to, to work, to show, uh, to, to be involved in the demonstrations. And this is the Cristal, this is the name of a project, French project called Cristal. Uh, and this is the new shuttle that was developed in order to make, uh, again, uh, new mobility services. And it will be first tested in EPFL in Lausanne, in Switzerland. And since we are also interested in the personal mobility of people, we have, this is the Segway. Of course, everyone, maybe you are familiar with the Segway. So thanks to the European project called PICA, we also are working on the design of a new personal vehicle, especially dedicated to elderly people and disabled people. And it will be, uh, it will have very uh, in interesting characteristics in that it can go down to the floor, uh, adaptable seats, uh, many, many stuff like that, and equipped with several sensors in order to help people to navigate autonomously and do the uh, advanced man-machine interfaces and thi things like that. We also work on dual mode vehicles, uh, electric vehicles mainly, in the context of several European countries. Uh, I can give you details later if you, if you want. And we, of course, in the, in, in the Habit project, for instance, we have worked on the automated driving up to 100, uh, 100 miles per hour on high-speed high roads, on highways, in full autonomous road with uh, overtaking and uh, things like that. Thank you very much, if you have any questions. False positives and non and non detections. I mean, like rock cur curves and uh, things like that. Yeah, so my my question is: Are we at the point that really we have to stop the car every three seconds, every five seconds, once a day? Okay. Because we detect a pedestrian when there is not a pedestrian. Uh, actually, for the pedestrian detections, what uh, it, it was developed in the context of a French project, big French project called Love. Okay, Love. Uh, vulnerable detections and so on. So the aim of this project was to uh, test all techniques of uh, sensor fusion in order to uh, perform pre or to develop pre-crash systems. Uh, actually, we won the context because uh, Valeo and Renault uh, were uh, providing the databases and made a kind of competition between the systems. and. Uh, Together with Mainz Paritech, we won the, this con uh, with, with a very good uh, rates, like 94% uh, uh, of uh, good detection rate and 70% of uh, recall. Uh, recall. And, but what we have to keep in mind is that we are developing assistance systems. So this, this means that we, we don't want to do it uh, when, uh, with 100 rate. I don't want false positives. 
uh, no matter if I miss some uh, some pedestrians, because what uh, what I want to do is to inform accurately the driver when there is a real danger. Uh, I tell him, okay, there is a pedestrian, and this is for sure. I don't want to have any false uh, alarm, but can I can admit some uh, non-detections. Actually, this is how it was designed. Because if you give false alarms to the driver, it will just switch off the system. See, so we have always to keep in mind that th those are ADAS systems. Yeah. Uh, You mean ro um, Actually, we have a, um, a monitoring system um, because, okay, I'll give you <coughs> some other examples. Uh, a very interesting question. Like, for instance, when the vehicle was uh, facing a static obstacle on the road, a truck or whatever, you need to know what to do. What, what's the strategy? Is it to stop and wait until the, uh, the obstacle uh, uh, disappear, or to inform the monitoring systems as we do now, or maybe try to overtake but you don't know the size of the obstacle. You don't know why it's stopped. It could be, uh, how to call it, barrage, uh, in, you know, or uh, works, or t temporary works. Barricade. Sorry? Barricade. Yeah, barricaded. So we don't know, actually, how to behave. This is an autonomous vehicle. So the idea, our first idea, was to monitor the system. The system can send, thanks to the communication, uh, telecommunications send an information that there is something on my way and can you tell me if I can overtake or not and if I can uh, proceed or not so we have a uh, camera cameras in the inside the vehicle that shows to the mon monitor uh, um, the supervising uh, people what is happening on and if they get the, the green light, then it's okay. You can do you can do the overtaking, uh, overtaking uh, the, as like the one I, I've shown you. So this was our strategy: is to use someone to tell in just in those cases. When are you resuming the uh, Darshan experiment? In uh, next November, from 28 to 30. For only one one month. Only yeah, only in November. <laughs> you will be missing that. <laughs> I missed the last one. <laughs> I can recommend we can make you a demonstration. We'll be at Inria, visiting Inria. Well, All of you. More, more seriously, when, when is the plan to be in regular service? Um, to, to be a true service? Yes. Actually, as I said, there is a, is a, a European project called Cyber Cities that will may, uh, very probably start in 2012. The aim, the aim of this project is to make a kind of competition, technology competition and cities competition. I'll explain that. Several cities will be um, candidates to deploy and test the, uh, this kind of service in their, uh, in their uh, neighborhoods, in the, in the city. Between six, uh, the duration of the test will be six to 12 months. So they have to be candidate, and several cities will be uh, selected uh, based on different criteria, like let's say the difficulty, uh, the sharpness of a city like Genoa, uh, or the um, like uh, I don't know, like a city of uh, Tricala in Greece, or you have different kind of cities, and we also are making a competition, a technology competition. So several providers, several manufacturers will, will come with their own system, say, okay, I'm doing the best one, and let's try. So we'll make, we, and we will, uh, at India will be in charge of uh, the selection of those systems and will be also involved in the uh, de development, let's say, of those systems in different cities. And actually, this is a very interesting project because uh, it will, we will show for the first time 
a true service in a mixed environment with people, pedestrian, uh, trucks, uh, buses and uh, vehicles and, uh, and it will be a four to five years project actually. So um, I think La Rochelle will be one of the candidates. So. <laughs> I think it will be uh, for free. The system at La Rochelle was a uh, free service, actually. We wanted to know just <coughs> had feedback from the people, from the users. Uh, so the mayor said, OK, it's for free. Let's just try it. So what do you think are the technological differences between deploying these in European cities versus American cities or Asian cities? Mm. Um, in Europe, or even in, in American cities or Asian cities, it, it's a, a problem of a business uh, model, business plan. Because uh, you may not need such uh, systems in, um, in a city center where you have buses or uh, very frequent buses. But you may need such systems in compounds, in industrial compounds, or in campuses like uh, huge campuses. Uh, you want to go from building uh, robotics uh, lab to the, uh, I don't know, computer graphic notes, not that, fa that far away, but another um, distant uh, la lab. You may use such systems that are um, uh, environment friendly, uh, electric vehicles, uh, not noisy, and so on. Uh, you may use it to go in a factory, for instance, from the, uh, from the entrance gate to uh, a given department. So it could be used because it is an on-demand system. It, it's very useful when the bus cannot be deployed. You cannot put a driver, a bus and a driver, uh, uh, waiting till uh, a student comes and says, OK, I want to, OK. So you, you, want, you may need an autonomous on-demand system in huge campuses or big campuses where you can uh, do something like that. So you're saying the same technical? The same techniques really could be also deployed in America or uh, in any other country where you have this kind of configurations. Mm. Yeah? I'm a little surprised that uh, going in regular city traffic would be, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite admin, and also very, very challenging. But maybe controlled environments like uh, airport parking lots. Yes, of centers, course. Yes. Yeah. Where the, uh, the situations are far more regular. Still, the unexpected can happen, but fewer things to go wrong, and everybody expecting it. Yeah. Of course, they are more adapted to the uh, places you mentioned because they are um, uh, more space and. Uh, uh, how do you say, uh, calibrated spaces. Right. Yeah. Uh, in very crowded areas, it would be uh, not even that productive because uh, would be many, many people. You can put it in a city center, for instance. But you can put it maybe in pedestrian areas or uh, touristic areas, for instance. Uh, this is true. This is true. You, yeah. <laughs> you have to select first the area, which is, which is interesting for you, and then uh, a, um, and deploy it, uh, and I'm sure you have all <laughs> technology needed to do that. 